So today we're going to be building out a simple emoji, taking the tongue face emoji, very popular, and we want to be able to create this in Adobe Illustrator. I prepared our document already with the gradients that we use to assemble this look. And we'll build it over in this space over the left side. But rather than having to spend several minutes or a longer time building out each individual gradient, I've provided them for you. You can see that they may be a mix of multiple colors or two, uh, one or two. But to begin with, we're going to take a look at starting out our background. I'm going to click over on the rectangle tool, left side navigation, and click and drag from the top corner, drag it down. You notice that the gradient is traveling left to right. We need to alter that direction. So I'm going to click on the gradient on the left side navigation to adjust and click and drag it downward towards the bottom half. Now that we have the background, we want to create out this ground space in which we can help make our emoji look like it's floating. So back over the rectangle tool, about three quarters of the way down, all the way down to the bottom of the screen. I'm going to switch, uh, draw out that gradient. And then I can simply use the eyedropper tool to match the color that I have up on my mock-up. We're then going to go over to the elliptical mark, uh, the ellipse tool. With the ellipse tool, I'm going to start out by drawing out a circle shape. I can hold down shift to maintain a perfect circle. And again, we can go in order. I'm going to use my eyedropper tool, match out the gradient, and we can see that our circle starts from this blackish color in the middle out to a faded transparent color over on the edge. If you do take a closer look, the gradient actually does have my cyan pushed up just so that I can make sure that the blue is blending in well. If I don't have the cyan blended up, it does have this grayish area, this grayish tone over the image. So pushing up the cyan so it matches out the background helps blend it a lot better. Now that I have this circle built out, notice that I have to squeeze it down. It's easier to squeeze it down from circle than it is to modify in the gradient tool. But I'll show you what I mean by that. If I squeeze this down, make it more of an oval shape, just understand the difference. If I click on the gradient tool in the left side navigation, this is already fitting to the area. If I had decided to fill in the area prior to, I will have to modify the gradient to fit into the restricted area. Now that we have the gradient for the shadow sitting underneath of our emoji, we're going to start building out the emoji itself. And go over to the ellipse tool again and hold shift to draw that perfect circle. You can always modify the size, but I want to make sure that it's relatively centered above the shadow and eyedropper to match the two colors. And we can see that again, it is already set up to fit very well to the circle shape. I can always tweak it if I want to modify. I can grab by the diamond at the top of the gradient slider, adjust it to something I'm satisfied with. Next, we're going to get into the mouth of the emoji. To draw out the mouth, I'm going to actually start out with two oval shapes. One is going to be the mouth itself. And then the oval that's going to help cut it down. This will help me use the shape builder tool to help make this one single piece. But the whole idea is I want to maintain this bottom portion of the oval. Before I do use the shape builder to cut the top two pieces out, I want to make sure that these are line centered. So I'm going to click on the align tool on the right side navigation. If you don't see the align tool, you can go up to window and alphabetical order. We can get the align. But I like to use the Workspace Essentials Classic. Has most of the tools that you need over on the right side navigation. So again, in the Align tool, I'm going to click on Horizontal Align Center. That just shifts and makes sure that these objects are perfectly aligned. Then I click over on the Shape Builder tool, left side navigation. Hold down Alt or Option. Option for Mac, Alt for PC to give me that smiley face left at the bottom. 
I'm going to match the gradient over on the sample. It's going to be our next one has this dark brown with the exterior lighter brown, but we will have to make some modifications to the shape. I'm looking to extend this. You can see from the original example that we do have that dark brown extending all the way out to the sides. So with this, I can look to expand this outward, but I'm going to reduce this down so it is more narrow and look to shift this up. I can hit Control Z if I mess up. But I'm going to shift it up, grabbing the line so I can narrow it out. I'll expand it out a little bit more. That's relatively close to what I'm looking for. There's still a modification that we have to make. You'll notice on the cheeks or the edges of the mouth that they are rounded. Gives it a softer, more friendly look. Comes off very harsh if I look at the sharp edges on this object. Bring it shifted down into the area, and I'll take a look closer in. If I click on the direct selection tool, we can see these little circles right on the corners in between our anchors. You can see it over on the right and left side. I'm going to click on one, hold down shift on my keyboard, and click on the other so that they're both highlighted blue. And then I can click and drag it inward to create that rounded edge. Again, it gives it a softer, friendlier look. Now that I have the mouth, I want to help create a little bit of dimension. As you can see over in the original example, there is a little bit of highlight yellow right on the bottom of the mouth, and then it gets a little bit darker on the top. So for this, we're going to actually use the offset path. With the object selected, you're going to go up to Object at the top of Navigation, down to Path, and Offset Path. Right now, my offset path is set at 0 0.03 inches. I'm going to change this to 0 0.04. I can check preview and make sure I'm satisfied with the depth. If I ever wanted to add more, let's say 0 0.05, just to get it a little bit thicker, just adds that little bit more dimension. But we want to now match the color that I've provided already in the gradients over on the right side navigation. I'm going to be taking a sample of this top right one. We're just going in order. And back over to my design, you can see that the gradient is traveling left to right now. I want to change the direction going from bottom to top so that I have the light on the bottom and then the darker on the top portion. When I click off of it, you can get a better sense of how that little highlight just adds a little bit of depth within the mouth, getting that shadow on the top area if we're imagining that the light source is coming from above. And speaking about the light source coming from above, we want to help create a little bit more depth. So we're going to add in a shine on the top of the emoji head. To do this, I'm going to go over to the left side navigation, click on the ellipse tool, and draw out a smaller circle on the inside of his head. Placement wise, again, we want to have it relatively centered. And I don't necessarily want to get down below the mouth itself. But to get a really better example, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to match the sample that I provided. And I need to invert my selection or my gradient. So I'm going to go over to the gradient tool left side. This time I'm going to click and drag from bottom to top, leaving that white highlight towards the top of the head. This helps just give it a nice little shine to help make it a little bit more three dimensional, a little bit more dynamic, so it's not so flat. I can always go back into the gradient, modify it again. I can move it up a little bit more if I want a little bit lighter highlight. But I still want to make sure that I get the transparency on the bottom. And you can see in the gradient, it actually goes to transparent from white to yellow into transparency. I don't want it to overlap my mouth. If I do want to have my mouth in front of it, I can move this object backwards. I can hold down shift control and sorry shift and tap left bracket i'm going to click on the selection tool just to make sure i have the object selected if you're on a mac remember it's command shift and left bracket will send the object backward Holding down just command and tapping up or down will allow me to modify and move the layer upward or downward. 
We just want to make sure that it's in front of our yellow head shape, but behind the mouth. Now that we've created out the mouth, we can actually use the mouth that we have to help build out our left eye as well. So I'm going to select on the eye. This works out very nicely that they relatively line up in the same direction. I can make a little bit of modification in the size, but I can hit Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC, and then Command V. I'm going to rotate this around. I go over to the center or any of the corners, hold down Shift. I'm going to rotate it around so it's upside down. Scaling it down this is going to be over on the left side of the eye. And like we did with the mouth, we're going to create out this sense of a shadow and outline. Before I do get into that, I'm going to look to build up my right eye just so I can get good sense of proportion. For the right eye, I'm going to hold down shift to draw out a perfect circle. And I'm going to match it to the example that I provided, the white to black gradient, the radial gradient. Click on that, and we see it applied into the eye itself. The gradient we want to make sure that we're lining up and getting it proportionally correct. So I can redraw it. I'm going to draw it off in the middle, out to the edge. Just giving that little shadow on the inside, making it appear as if it's inward on the yellow layer. Next, I can draw out a circle for my pupil. Click and drag, holding down Shift. Move this into the center. If I want to, I can select both pieces. Go over to the line. Click on center, or horizontal line center, and vertical or line center just to make sure it's exactly the place where I want. Again, I can use the gradients provided. Eyedropper, match the color tone. We're gonna add another offset path onto this object with it selected, back up the object, down to path, offset path. This time I'm gonna reduce this down to about 0.3. I just want a little bit of element to add in some dimension Nothing too overpowering. I can check and reach out preview, make sure it's good for me. Click OK. And again, to provide a new gradient, this gradient travel is gray to black. And I'm actually going to select out the black to lighter grayish color. So onto this eye. If I zoom in on the eye, we can see it a little bit better. For this gray, we're going to adjust it so it goes vertically downward, adding a little bit of highlight on the top of the eye. If you want to make any modifications, you can always select the object, go over to the gradient panel. Right now, there is a little bit of blue tone on my object just because I was going with the original cyan color, but I can drop this down if I want just more of a gray color. Same thing on the inside of this object. I can always pull up a tone or pick up a tone of cyan if I feel like I need it. But what I was really looking to get is just that highlight on the top and the shadow on the bottom. So I can zoom out. So very simply, we have the left eye for the subject or right facing us. But I want to use this as an indicator on making sure that this eye extends to where I want. So I can hit Command Shift, right bracket, and move the eye upward. I can see that I can get a little bit tighter with it. I actually might scale this down a little bit to be more flattened for the winking eye. Again, once I have this eye selected, I'm going to go to Object Offset Path. The thickness of it looks good, but I want to use the gradient already created for me. Make sure I have it selected. Use the eyedropper, match the color. We can take a closer look at the eye. Again, it's going left to right. I want to change the direction. 
this time going from bottom to top, just getting that little orange on the top, giving us a little bit more dimension. Finally, we just have to look to do the tongue. To do the tongue, I'm going to click over on the rectangle tool, left side navigation. With the rectangle tool, I can click and drag it outward to create out of shape. I can use the eyedropper tool to match to the gradient that I provided. To add a little bit more detail, I'm going to look to first round out the bottom two corners to go to a rounded edge, the bottom of the tongue. Click on the circle on the interior of the anchor on the bottom corner and hold down shift to select the left one as well. And then I can click and drag in to give it a rounded bottom on the tongue. As I take a closer look, looks pretty good, but if you think about the tongue, we usually have that more cut or that definition of a cut inside the middle of the tongue. To do this, I'm gonna click on the pen tool, and with the pen tool, I can click three points. I'm gonna start out with a point directly in the middle of this shape. I'm gonna go relatively, I'm gonna control Z if I undo or mess up, but relatively straight above, I'm gonna click a point, and then I'm gonna add a point on the right side of that point and a point on the left side of that point. Keeping it relatively even, evenly spaced. Did a pretty good job. But what I wanna to do to create this cut, I'm gonna click on the direct selection tool, click on that middle point and click and drag it downward. I can hold shift to make sure it goes straight down. And again, it gives me that nice little cut on the tongue to help create the dimension create some detail of defining out the tongue shape. Finally, we're gonna to look to put a drop shadow on this object. To put a drop shadow, I have to select the object. We're gonna to go to effects, stylize, and drop shadow. With drop shadow, we don't necessarily need to overdo it. We're just looking to help create a little bit more dimension. For my settings, I'm gonna put my opacity up to 95%, my X offset down to zero, Y offset down to 0.01, and my blur to 0.05. I click OK. And as I zoom out, we can take a look at the design. If there's any changes I want to do, maybe scale up the actual size of the emoji, make sure to deselect it in the background. I can hold down Shift, drag upward to make my proportions of my emoji just a little bit bigger. Maybe expand out the shadow, just to make sure it reaches the width. And there we have it, just a basic emoji shape. I'll make sure to provide the document for you with all the different gradients already preset. I hope you enjoyed.